You are live with the Latino Slant. My name is Polly. What's happening, everybody? Happy Monday, March 25th. Que paso? It's 1 p.m. Pacific on the West Coast. Was that 4 p.m. East Coast time? What's happening, everybody? Cool stuff. Crazy. Crazy Monday so far. I, I got to tell you, we are going to hit some hot topics. We're going to hit some hot topics. We're going to be talking about uh, Latinx. The term is winning. It's winning. We're going to talk about gringo, gringo, fragility, <laughs> fragility, <laughs> fragility. So fragile. It's so fragile that you, you got to say it correctly. It is a thing. We're also going to talk about uh, some thoughts I have on border issues and it's now so important now more than ever that we find common ground on those issues that are more complex, more serious, uh, whether it's economy, uh, community, neighborhoods. It is it is important to do three things, guys. It's important to do three things, guys. Have a discussion. Right. Have a discussion, find some common ground and compromise. No one's got to win at everything. No one's got to be right about everything all the time. And I, frankly, I frankly, I frankly, I've had it, sir. I've had it. So we're going to get a little spicy. We're going to get a little spicy. Also, too, if we, if we can get to it, I got mo I got reviews on Frida. I got the new Carlos Cantana. Uh, just incredible, incredible blog post that he had. But I got to hit these topics and we're going to start off with the box office because some people online get shit wrong and they got these blinders on that tell them if it's woke, then that means it's broke. And, you know, the, 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 the same, uh, the same, uh, you talk about echo chamber. Everyone can have an echo chamber. That echo chamber, echo chamber goes on. What am I talking about, Polly? We're going to find out right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Everything is fine in Hollywood. Don't worry about it, Polly. Everything is good in Hollywood. Don't worry about it, fandom. Everything is all right in Hollywood. Everything is great in Hollywood. Get woke, go broke. Do some coke. It's no joke. Then you can make movies. Like, I, I wish they would just do Blow again and make great movies. Y'all off your rocker. I'm going to tell you right now. There is an argument. There is a valid argument. I'd say up to a degree that they're, Hollywood is not doing anything original anymore, Polly. And I say they are. And I say they have been. Where we can agree, we can find that common ground, is that they don't get marketed like the bigger films do. But you need these bigger films from the big studios to not only exist, but to be hit so they can supplement the smaller productions. So also, too, smaller to mid-level studios can thrive, can exist. And this past weekend in the box office is a great example of just that. So um, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. You can see which 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 movies have hit the top 10 this week. And you got everything from sequels to big blockbusters to unique original stories from independent production companies. Neon. Angel Studios, A24. What else do you guys want? Can you read? Can you do a little research instead of blabbering your big mouths? I just want to know that. 
I just want to know that. Do a little work, especially if you're marketing yourself off as some expert on the uh, on on the entertainment entertainment business, and perhaps you've never worked in the entertainment business. I don't think you need to. It sure would help. It sure would help. But you know what? That's cool. Do your work. No, man, just just how I feel, man. I'm keeping it real. I'm authentic. I'm not keeping it woke, dog. Ain't no echo chamber, dog. My mothers, here you guys go. And this is what I mean. Ghostbusters Dune 2, Kung Fu for the top three. Big blaster, big blockbuster movies making big money in this age where you can see movies, TV shows anywhere you want at any time. That has never been the case before. I'd even say to this effect, even before the lockdowns, we did not have so much entertainment at our fingertips, so many choices at our fingertips. And these are big hits. Don't get it wrong, right? They might have big budgets, but these are still big hits and could could turn a profit for these big companies. But then we go down to number four, Immaculate, starring everyone's favorite Chi-Chi girl right now, Sydney Sweeney. She co-produced it. She worked with this director before. They're doing another film now. It's called Immaculate. She's the star. It is from Neon. It made $5.3 million. This is Neon's biggest opening of any of their films in their production's history, guys. That has to be noted. You go down two more. The same thing. Late Night with the Devil made $2.8 million. This is a super independent movie. Number six. Let's go down two more. Love Lies Bleeding. A24 starring Kristen Stewart. It actually went up and made money. Super narrow niche brand. I mean, it's uh, about two women in love with each other, the, the whole thing, crazy story, uh, thriller, I don't know what. Big hit for A24. You talk about diversity and, uh, 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 oh, I lost the word. You just, you talk about the diversity of entertainment in this top 10. It's all right there. Then we go to number 10, Cabrini Angel Studios, excuse me, number nine, Angel Studios, guys. Angel Studios. These guys are, are, are these guys are rewriting the entertainment books. You got Neon, you got A24, you got Angel Studios, all in the top 10. Guys, if you're in the top 20 of making films of, of your movie making money, that is amazing. You're doing something right. Cabrini, beautiful film. A24, they got a they got a roster. They got a slate of great films that have come out that are coming in. And I tell you what, right now, I was just talking to Michelle of uh, the Force of Light Entertainment. You talk about diversity. Oh my God. You got you got Mexicans uh, directing films, you got Latino leads, you got uh, Asian stories with this uh, director, with this doctor coming up in this next film. You got this all uh, black families, these black communities uh taking in um uh, 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 orphans, uh, great true stories. I mean, they are killing it on the diversity. It's funny how Hollywood being as twisted as they are that they have, they have yet to, to, to write a story about this, the diversity of angel studios, the, the uniqueness of the angel studios of what they're doing, high quality entertainment. And they happen to have all kinds of diversity in their stories because it lends itself to the story to the story Polly to the story now I gotta tell you guys I gotta tell you guys and I'm looking at this list I'm gonna go down I'm gonna go down out of the top 10 for a second okay for the for a second I'm gonna go out of the top 10 all right where am I 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to. Let's go to. Let's go to number eleven, and number. What is it? 11, 12, 13. These are two films that I have seen. And that's another thing, guys. That's another thing, guys. See the movies you're going to talk about? Call me crazy, but you're doing this pretty much for a living. You're asking people to pay you uh, a service, whether it's a, uh, a super chat or super thanks or a membership fee or PayPal me. You got to come equipped. You better come fully equipped and know what the hell you're talking about. How, how, how can I even have a discussion or a debate, find some common ground if you haven't seen shit? If you don't know what's going on, if you don't really know what's going on, it's all right there, guys. I'm not, this is, this takes maybe an hour of, of prep. At least, at least. Number 11, One Life. Fantastic drama from Bleecker Street starring Anthony Hopkins. It's made $3.4 million. That is a hit, guys. Problemista from A24 starring Julio Torres, Tilda Swinton. I love this damn movie. $1.3 million it's made so far. It's a slow uh, release. That's why you're seeing these numbers, plus 174, plus 93. Plus 26, what does that mean? Theater, they're getting more theaters and more percentage of people going to see their movies. That is healthy. That is great for the box office. That is what you want. That is exactly what you want. And yet people are telling you, entertainment's dead. There ain't nothing coming out. There ain't nothing original coming out. Now, I'll give you this. I will give you this and I will end this com I will end my 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 rant on this and we're going to jump into several rants today. Where we do agree is Hollywood's lack of creative imagination when it comes to marketing these films. Did you hear about Problemista? Did you hear about One Life? Did you hear about um what are the other ones? Love Lights Bleeding, Late Night with the Devil, and obviously you're heard of Immaculate. Late Night with the Devil and Love Lies Bleeding, have you heard of them? Have you seen them? I say this one more time, guys. Look at the, look at the diversity of entertainment in this top 13 list, and I say this is wonderful. You're seeing more films being produced for less, making money, and also, too, you're seeing that balance of kiddie films and movies for adults, movies for, for grown-ass adults. Now, is it ever going to be those numbers as pre-lockdown? Not for a while. Check out WDW Pro. They got all the numbers. They know what the fuck is up. Check them out for all that stuff. Do it. I'm telling you. But I say this, I say this, with this age of screaming, <laughs> streaming, with this age of streaming, everything is different. Everything is new. These fools are still trying to figure out what's going on. That's why you got movies like Prey and Flaming Hot that didn't go to a, a, uh, a movie theater. Which, if you'd seen Prey in a movie theater, special invitation, I did not make it. I know Cameron Pasha did. If you saw Flaming Hot movie theater, I got the invitation, I went, you would be like, oh my God, these movies belong on the big screen. These movies belong on the big screen. So they're still really trying to figure these things out. Not to mention big movie stars going to television shows, streaming at any time. I could see Jodie Foster in Nyad anytime on Netflix. I could see Jodie Foster in Night Country anytime on HBO Max. Why am I going to go to a movie theater and see her in whatever film? So do you understand what I'm saying? That even with all these entertainment 
choices at our fingertips, people are still going to the movies. People are still, it's never going to be the same, guys. It's never going to be the same. But I say that that is a very healthy, healthy looking, diverse group of films that are being uh, seen by people. And uh, I think what Hollywood needs to keep doing is lowering their budgets and getting films out. Got to remember, I believe Ghostbusters was made for what? $100 million? Uh, Dune's got more work work ahead out for it. So like one, $190 million? Get those budgets down. I know uh, going to CinemaCon, we'll be going to CinemaCon. Uh, we're going to see presentations from Universal, Disney, Angel Studios. We're going to see their future slates. I'm going to get their future slates, guys. I'm going to find out their budgets. I'm going to give you reports every day. I'm going to give you video reports. I'm going to give you articles every day that we're there at the CinemaCon coming up in Las Vegas in April. We're going. We're going to cover it. Right? And we're going to say, look, look this, this, this is what's going on. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Let me show you one more thing. Because people, you know, everything's a sequel or everything's this. No imagination. I don't know what. I, I argue, too, that it takes a lot of imagination to make a sequel or remake successful. It's not all that easy, guys. All right, let's go to this really quick. Let me see. Can you see this? And I hope everyone's doing well. Over 60, 60 of you guys combined on the X on YouTube watching hanging out i haven't seen any comments yet uh fletcher markham we'll get to that all that good stuff if I, I haven't even looked at the chat right now i'm gonna get to you guys i love you guys i love you <laughs> stupid ass stupid polly look at most look at look, look at the sidebar here most anticipated movies. Let's go to most anticipated movies. You guys with me? Good. Godzilla number one. Dude, we always going to need a Godzilla movie like this. A big hit. Monsters. Boom. I'm in. Alien Romulus. Feder Alvarez has his work cut out for us. Horrors. Science fiction. Boom. Again, big names. We need this. Ah, an original movie. When I say original, a brand new potential IP. Monkey Man, Dev Patel, I'm in. Lord of the Rings, The War of Rohitam comes out the end of the year. Okay. You could say that is uh, a new, even though it's from a particular part of Lord of the Rings lore. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Black comedy babysitters boom okay that's the number five one that's a comedy so you got a comedy you got a animation drama action you got some kick-ass action you got some horror sci-fi action and you got monsters action just those top five that's pretty good guys now let's go to the bottom six ministry of ungentlemanly warfare hell to the yeah who does not want to see that one? That looks fantastic. That looks great. We're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to chomp it up on that one. You know, with Cavill and then it being based off a true story, we're going to chop it up. We're going to chop, 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 chop it up. Hell yeah. Isa Gonzalez is in that show. Where do I sign up? Great. Civil War. I'm hearing more and more that Civil War is something very interesting to watch. Another original uh action drama here you go guy you got the guy richie you got civil war you got furiosa a mad max saga a spin-off of the mad max stories by george miller you know what again you need movies like these you need these big imagination movies and if it's gonna fail it's all on george miller i think it's gonna be great i love anya taylor joy I think it's going to kick ass. From what Nate from uh, the Nate uh, Mr. H reviews, go to my boy Nate. He's got the inside scoop on this. Nate says, Chris Helmsworth has a great performance. So there you go. Look at all this great entertainment coming. What are you guys talking about? 
The first omen? Ay, Dios. I know. No, no, no. Sonia Braga starts? Ooh. That's scary. Another scary. This one's original. This comes out next month. April 17th, starring Melissa Barrera. Abigail. One of the stars is Melissa Barrera. Abigail. This is this is promising, guys. So I don't know Abigail, First Omen, Furiosa, Civil War, Ministry, Don't Tell Mom, Lord of the Rings, Monkey Man, Romulus, Godzilla. Who in the F is saying there's nothing exciting and original coming out of Hollywood? Even if those are remakes, spins off, spin offs, I don't care. You need those films to be successful so you can have the smaller ones succeed. So it makes space for these films. So, yeah, man, that is my rant. You know, we're just getting started here. The Latino Slant. My name is Polly. I got the bigote. What up? I don't play. I don't play, Fletcher Williams. I don't. Yeah. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I don't play. What do we got? Well, let's read some people's comments, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump into uh, why Latinx is winning. It's winning, by the way, Fletcher. I'm gonna tell you why. I have a theory. <gasps> okay. So. All right. Here we go. Let's go from most recent to past. Let's have you read them. Go for it. Oh, okay. Where are we at? Most Come on, oh. Junior. I need you. I need you. Chop, chop. President it's the, accounted. It's, it's on the screen. Latino the slant ballet. Let's uh, do it. Civil War sounds not interesting to me. That, isn't that Dave, 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 Dave T. Git? Dave T. Git? Yeah, what is that? I don't know. Well, what's up, Dave? Uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, Civil War. It didn't sound interesting to me at first. I've been reading about it. I've been hearing about what people say. It's actually mismarketed, and it's a lot deeper and more interesting. So I'm all in. Olaf. Olaf is our good friend. Olaf. Okay, read Rooftop, please. Oh, uh, So everyone complains about sequels and reboots, but when something new comes out and it is actually good, they don't go to see it or even talk about it. I mean, Yes. Yes. And the problem here, guys, is what happens is that you hit that vacuum of like, you know, everything. And unless you're going to be full, I'm boycotting Hollywood until, you know, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. I respect that. Then you really, you really got to walk away. But there's so many good new movies coming out that have come out. I think also, too, Fletcher, we here at The Slant actually document, watch, do reviews on so many different types of movies, brother. Yeah, it's not just a regular, you know, blockbuster. Sander Hammerschlam, Wrench of the Channel, member Ki Pasa. Which means what's up to those who don't speak in Spanish. <laughs> uh, JB Spooky Reviews. I don't see a lot of hype for Godzilla, honestly. Which Godzilla? I guess that would be the question, right? Well, you know what's funny? And what's up, JB? Good to see you here. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, Fletcher, we were in the movie theater last week seeing... Um, what did I see last week with all those guys? I can't even remember. Mm. I can't remember. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they play the, the Godzilla uh trailer and you know people oh, yeah, yeah. but then uh a bunch of us yelled out minus one minus one that's that's funny <laughs> yeah. that's funny oh and we got hector garcia just saying mm. hi lol hola mm. back mm. we have black saber they'll probably create some form of artificial scarcity to fix it that that could be something oh. right? okay okay we have Dr. Marissa Pay in the house. Hi. Hashtag Asian Oprah. Oprah. Asian Oprah. Asian Oprah. Here, thanks to the invite by the Orville Nation. Well, thank you, Orville Nation, and thank you, Dr. Marissa. We hope uh, you like it and subscribe, please. Uh, let me tell you, Marisa, uh, pleasure to have you with us. Um, I'm sure I'm going to scare you off at some point during today's stream. 
<laughs> but we love PJ. We love Orville Nation, Maria with T and Telly, all those good people. All right, here we go. All right. So now we got awesome one in the house. Films are those. Mm. What are those? Mm? Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, don't that's, know. I mean, I, I think there are these things where the moving pictures move. But mm, Oh, is that what they are? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I heard the, the the kids on TikTok are talking about it. So, all the all but the TikTokers. TikTokers. So we got Renji Gupti. Thank you so much for subscribing as a, a subscriber. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool. I say. Yeah. Oh, let me see. I'm I'm, I'm checking out our X. Go ahead, oh. keep going. Okay. So then we got uh, Rosa Para in the house. What the hey! hell, Polly? We can't. Uh, we can't say what we did to Polly. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a secret. <laughs> the secrets was in the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, what'd y'all do to Polly, man? Uh, I drank, I drank some cafecito, man. I'm ready. Was that I'm Cuban ready. cafecito or, or uh, regular and you know American what? cafecito? Uh, what is this? It's American. Uh, well, I got to tell you, Rosa, we haven't even started on the other stuff yet. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, this ain't is nothing. The, this is the muted stuff, you know. Well, we just haven't got into Latinx, into Gringo Fragility, into the into Border Vitriol. I mean, that box office thing I just added right now. I just added this morning. Okay, all right. Where where are we at, bro? Where are we? All at? right. So now we have uh, we got Roy Cyberpunk. Mm. Check out the poll because it tells the actual truth about the Murica leftism colonialism imposition of latinx and where we latinos think about it they're winning my you know <laughs> roy cyberpunk where are we with that poll oh let's see so right now oh. we're 37 votes and okay. pendejos is winning <laughs> okay all right all right. Well, this poll is much different than the one we did uh, a couple days ago on on X. So that's what we'll get to. Hey, Penny, what's happening? Give us. All right, we got uh, uh, CJC Hollywood's cracking out some good films, indie films, uh, all for diverse type of films. Cracking. What would what, you smoke, brother? Cranking. 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 You know, cranking. I'm cranking it out. Uh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, all for diverse types. Uh, all for diverse types of films. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Cabrini, all Italian, directed by a Mexican. <laughs> Angel Studios produced beautiful film, amazing true story. Right, independent Angel Studios. A twenty four, Bleecker Street, Problemista. Incredible film. I'm telling you guys, don't be fooled too just because oh it, 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 it only made uh number number nine. It's, it's a flop. You guys, it made money top 20. Any any I'm telling you, go to WDW Pro, go to those vatos. Uh Fletcher knows those guys know they know what the, they know the numbers. Any movie that makes money that much, it's a miracle. Okay, what else yeah. we got? Hey, what's up, Rooftop? We got Rooftop Korean saying hi. We got Orville Nation saying hola, Polly. My dude. We got uh, My dude. The Stream Allen saying that Douglas uh, Nelson just became a sponsor. Right. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. We have uh, Olaf just became a sponsor. We yep. have Mr. Buckcrab Media. And we mm. also have uh, Brian McNatt. And Rosa yep. Parra, thank you so much. We gracias, also have gracias. Connie Cleary saying, Ola. "What's up, Connie? Connie's new. I haven't seen Connie around. Ninety-six yeah, people Connie's... lining up in the chat. We're warming it up. We're just getting work. Fletcher. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Go on. All right, we got Daryl Brewer say, "What's happening, everybody?" We got Wex real Luther. fast on Daryl Brewer. He got his uh, he got his book in the mail. Oh, cool! He got his book in the mail. And what book? The novella that I wrote. Put on. Can you put Daryl's back? Oh, did you take it away? Um, they call me Charleston. Thank you so much to Daryl and all of the over one hundred supporters of this campaign. You are now getting your books. And some of you guys, actually most of you guys are getting the bookmark as well. 
getting stickers, getting personal messages from me because I value you. Mucho. All right. Who do we got? Viva, Viva San Chavez. Viva la Revolución. Who's San Chavez? Wex. Who's San Chavez? All right. Uh, we I don't have... know who San Chavez is. Are you Cesar Chavez? Wex, we'll Saint Chavez? Viva San Chavez. Viva la Revolución. Yeah, but who's San Chavez? That's what I want to know, I Wex. I think okay. he's trying to say, San, you know, Chavez, you know. And he's doing like a saint. We're not talking about Hugo Chavez. We're talking about Caesar Chavez, guys. Big difference. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I'm, I hope to get to that article. Uh, hopefully, we'll see how we go. go. All right, Vinny? All right, who we got? Who all else? right. And then we got uh, Manolo Rivera say, hola, mi gente. We have What's up, Manolo? Michael Nelly saying, did you watch uh, Arthur the King? That's the new uh, Mark Wahlberg yeah. movie. I, I, I want to see Arthur the King so bad. I love Marky Mark. It's a doggy story. It looks, it's true story. It looks really, you know, pulling the heartstrings. We're, we love that stuff. We, we did, I didn't get to it. Um, I saw Problemista. I saw uh, Ghostbusters. And uh, we saw, we saw the latest uh, episode. We, we're pretty caught up in Shogun. I think we're an episode behind. So um, soon, Michael. Okay. Who else? All right, so we got Ola from uh, Lord Tot. We okay, got, Lord's uh, another guy who got the book. Lord got the book. Yeah, and by the way, everybody who did get the book, if you just tag, uh, you know, Polly with a copy of it on uh, Twitter, we can, you know, repost it, show us some love. Uh, Daniel Day Team down with the Latin X. And we have the greatest fan. Greatest fan. fan. Okay, we had to take him out. Fletcher, you were becoming robo, ro Robocop. Maybe drop out and drop back in. Okay, hello, hello. Uh, we'll try listening as much as I am for my upcoming meeting. You do that. All right. Then we got a couple of super chats and a couple of memberships. You guys can do memberships. We have great memberships here. I'm, I'm doing a video a week just for members. We just put up a, a uh, special uh, Ghostbusters review just for our members. Fletcher Williams is a member. Olaf is a member. And he left a message. What's up? What'd you say? Hola, amigos. Took a few weeks break from Slant today. Only has 24 hours. <laughs> the day only has 24 hours. DLS makes it easier today. Hope everyone's having a great time. Oh, man. You know what? You know what's, what's funny is this is my first time back on the Monday live stream. Fletcher's been hosting it the last two weeks just because... I've been having to say yes to extra jobs out in the field. So I'm, I'm sure you guys understand, but we got to do what we got to do. So it, I'm with you. I'm, I'm back as far as Monday live. And uh, yeah, so it's always it's always a pleasure to have you. Orville Nation for $5. It's PJ. He brought his people, over 100 people live in the chat here on YouTube and here on x do not miss our next one i'm gonna let you guys know why the term latinx is winning why it's winning me alegro de verte muchacho ah oh, muchísimas gracias también igualmente señor uh it's uh really good to really good to see you in the chat my brother graph web for two dollars he goes he goes all over he you are you are a man or a woman a person who stands behind your principles for the love of all that is holy. Hashtag cancel Disney plus. Um, I have not had Disney plus in a year, about a year now. And I used to pay for it. So I guess I'm, I guess I'm part of you guys. I guess I'm part of graph webs. He is the most consistent man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Let me see. Fletcher's back. Are we good? Are you good? I think I'm defrozen. frozen. But okay. I don't know if my heart can go on. Is that the song for me? Aww. I remember. I would, have I would have never have left Jack go. Never. Yeah. Never let him go. It's BS. <laughs> Rose, yes. let him go. Uh, okay. The super. Okay. The, the new members in the, in the comments get the bigote. And the super chats. We love super chats. Keep them coming. You get the Mexican Iron Man. Ah, 
All right, my man. All right. How are we doing? We're doing good. Okay, good. good. Ready for our next topic? <laughs> getting some water in me, man. All right, got to stay hydrated. Okay, we'll we'll see, we'll see you in a little while. Okay, be in a bit. All right. Well, let's get readjusted here. Uh, recently, we uh, had put up a poll on Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, excuse me, X. In we do this once a year. Pick your poison. Why? What term do you use? Do you call yourself if you're a Latino in the U.S.? You know, but I just said pick one, and we uh, had them pick Latinx, Latine, Hispanic, Latino. And as you can expect, uh, as you can expect, ninety-four percent of you picked Latino and Hispanic combined. Six percent Latinx. Six percent Latinx. So I, uh, that just said to me that the term Latinx is here to stay. Like it, love it, hate it, doesn't matter. It's here to stay. I, I'd like to say that I've always thought it had a place in our community. I've said that from the beginning. I also said it's not a term that resonates with me. It's not a term that I believe you should throw, throw out as an umbrella all-encompassing term for the Latino people. Just, I think, because of what uh, what it can be connotate, what it's connected to, and the changes, uh, social and political uh, messages that, that it has connected to, because not everyone agrees with that. So I've always said that. But now I want to talk about why I think Latinx is winning. Number one, academia. I was um, reading articles and looking up some research on the history of the border uh, of the Southwest from the last 200 years. And most of it is stuff that I've known as that was my major in college was Chicano studies, which I love so much. But what I kept coming up against was the term Latinx by these professors, by these writers who I went to, not to find out about what they call themselves or what they call, you know, uh, uh, the Latino history in, in America. I wanted to find out about, you know, some historical facts about the border. I don't know what. And I would consistently see in their bio or see in how they blanket term the border experience as Latinx. And it just blew my mind. Not only that, to find out that these produce these um, academia have created subsets of of uh, places of of learning of interest uh, from Latinx, that Latinx is something really now as far as academia par for the course. It's used everywhere, and then when you specialize in certain fields. Yes, certain fields in academia, there has been more newer inventions of words that kind of stopped me at my tracks. One is the field of joteria. Yeah, you heard me right. Joteria is the field study, of, and, that, and this is brand new to me. In the LGBT learning academia world, it is a study on kind of reclaiming being gay. Not being gay, but all that, you know, the history and everything, but also to reclaiming the word hoto. It's not a nice word, especially who says it, how you say it, when you say it. Hey, they got a field called Joteria now. So I'm like, okay. But again, it's a subset of Latinx. And it just blew me away. Blew me away. I'm like, what is this? 
So you talk about subculture upon subculture. There's another one. And we're going to go on to the next reason why I think Latinx is winning. In academia, there's also now critical race feminista. Critical race feminista. Hmm. So again, whether that's your jam or Jotari is your jam or not your jam, it is here. And it is not going away. So that is my first, first point in why Latinx is winning. Number two, Latino Hollywood. Latinos in Hollywood, uh, whether they are working in the business, whether they are doing panels, or maybe they're just a production uh, entity that produces panels, or uh, symposiums, seminars, they've all have taken the Latinx upon them. Sometimes doubling and tripling down. I did a video called the triple down. The triple down on Latinx. Is that from Leguizamo to, uh, to, uh, to Latinx house to other entities, they are using Latinx. And they fully know well that the majority of Latinos don't like the word. Why are you calling us that? Why are you calling us that? They've doubled down on this, guys. The ones that are in in, 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 in all you have to do is go to their Instagrams, go to their and see what see what symposiums, what seminars, what is being produced out there, and what language they're using. And I would also say that people that they invite, people that produce, people that are part of this are from also from academia. Okay, finally, another reason why Latinx won't go away is um, it really shouldn't, in my opinion, when it comes to the LGBTQ community. I've always thought that Latinx is a perfect definition for people from that community. That, to me, makes sense as to the world that, they're, that they are living in. Whether I agree or not, whether I agree or not, to me, it makes sense. In fact, the first time that Latinx was used in the media uh, was unfortunately in the massacre of the uh, Club Q in Florida, Orlando, I believe, and they used the term Latinx. Horrible. Um, event that happened where many people were, were killed. Um, but in describing the Latino gay community that was slaughtered and some and the survivors, that term came out. So I look at these, 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 these variables, academia, Latinos in Hollywood and the LGBT community, this term will never go away. And in some cases, it shouldn't. It's, it, it, it is a valid, definable term for that certain part of our community. My thing is that that certain part of the community is 5% of the 100. I don't know what some of those people in that 5%, what their end game is. Is there a compromise? Is there common ground? Because if, 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 if one of their end games is to tear down the Spanish language, tear down the uh, Latino culture because of the patriarchy, because of, the, of colonialism, you, I don't think you're going to get the result you want. I don't think you're ever going to find common ground and a compromise because of that 95%. And I say Lat Latinx is winning, right? Um, Yes and no. Yes and no. It's being reinforced by that small majority and it is being reviled by the majority. So you got to watch yourself, guys. If you don't care, resistance, I don't care, I'm going to do my own thing. That's, that's you know, the, if that's where you're coming at in, in, in your society and where you're living in, 
Again, when you get out of your bubble and get out in the world, are you going to get those results that you want? I don't think you are. When I saw Mexican Iron Man say, who the hell, what morons voted for Latinx? It didn't surprise me because that's always going to be a very narrow niche term for a very small percentage of, of our community. And God bless. I welcome everyone here. I welcome everyone here. Did I say I welcome everyone here? Even the people I don't agree with? I welcome everyone here. However, this is a Latino slant. It's not the Latinx slant. I'm a Chicano. I'm not Chicanx. Right? I'm not, I, I listen. That's that's if that's is what you fully believe to be, to be that fully formed person, all power to you. However, if it is part of your principles and your in 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 your agenda that you want to tear everything down that I uphold, that I uh, value and that I love, it's it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. All right. So that is, uh, that's where I'm at with uh, Latinx. How did I do? Well, well you, uh, you, you uh, kicked a little bit of a hornet's nest on the chat, which is good. Good. I think, I think everybody yeah. is, is passionate about this, uh, this, uh, yeah. this topic. It, it does bring a lot of, uh, you know, questions rent out you know and like you said it is winning a lot of people over in the academic sector and then um also people that have uh kind of like a disenfranchise uh you know a mentality or thought that maybe mm. the community is not um accepted in them mm -hmm, and of mm -hmm. course they're gonna you know create something that's not uh new words are not new you know, it's right. every every they add new words to dictionaries. Even the Royal, mm -hmm. you know, Academia de España, which is the official Spanish, um, okay, you know, uh, kind of beacon of what mm -hmm. Spanish is in the world, it, it creates new words. Um, okay, a couple things really fast. If you're in X, we have a poll that's going to end very soon. Get to our YouTube channel right now and vote in the poll. Because I'm going to end it. Because uh, after this talk, we're we're you know we'll go to your we'll go to uh, we'll try to burn through some of your comments, but uh, we're going to move on. So go on. What else, Fletcher? Yeah, I, I think that uh, you know new words are created, whether we enjoy those words or we not enjoy. I mean, eventually mm -hmm. they're going to either remain within the the side guys of culture or they won't you know time can uh -huh. only tell those those things and um uh, it's you know we're gonna see who's who's gonna push it out i guess more mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I, as for me and I, I just i don't know anybody that doesn't use it outside of academia right um, as far right. as you know uh and i know they're trying to also like uh Certain others, you know, they do try to like. I think French. There are also some people in French, uh, you know, and uh, and there's some. Uh, uh, Tagalog has a lot of Spanish, uh, mm. in it, which is the yeah. the one of the one of the many languages in uh, the Philippines. And uh, yeah, you sure. know, there's a little bit of push for certain change on that one um, that I've seen in some Asian countries also a little bit of change in that. So it's all over the culture and, uh, you know, it's one of those culture changes or shifts. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Let's, uh, let's uh, burn through some of these. Uh, right. Let's go back and forth. I'll read one. You read one. Solomon Thornton. I have okay. no problem with Latinx, even though I joke about it. Don't force. I don't joke about, don't force the agenda. Okay. Yeah. I agree. All right. So uh, Darth Plato says someone the other day, a social worker, tried to correct me and said the word Latinx. It was pronounced Latinx. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard people use that, too. So it's like it's not bad enough well, that you're saying it, but you're right. You're, you're butchering that, too. So, 
Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's like, wait a minute, is this is is this a word? Yeah. <laughs> How do you say this word? Yeah. Very good. Very good, Darth. Yeah. Bonzo Kilburn, can't we just all call Latinos Mexican? I think we can solve that problem. Ah. <laughs> you know that is think... true because most of the time, everywhere that I use, you know, sometimes I work with some people, and most of the time they're like, mm -hmm. "Well, you're Mexican, right?" And I'm like, "Well, technically, I'm not Mexican." So, but there's like, "Oh, you're, you know, south of the Rio Grande. You're Mexican." That's funny. After a while, yeah. you're just like, "All right, fine, I'm Mexican." So maybe Bonzo has something that's going to blow everything out the water. We're yeah. all going to be Mexican now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good, man. Since Corner, I definitely think that it's absolutely one of their end games to tear down the Spanish language. I have no respect for that. Yeah, that's that's where I have a hard stop. That's where yeah. I have a hard stop. All right, uh, your turn. All right, so Manolo Rivera says, nope, stop it. It's never valid. It's an imposition. Stop playing their game. Hey, and that's, you know, Manolo represents a lot of people. That's the that's the vast majority. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, to me, and HD has two. All right. Oh, let's get to the, uh, did Latinx originate in, not in Latin Hollywood? And ha, this is the best poll in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I'll tell you right now, a lot of a lot, a lot, this is kind of misinformation, but Latinx didn't start off with gringos. So uh, it's 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 from it's it's from the Latino gay community. So, and it's been around. Latine has been around longer. Um, I think maybe white, white academia and Latino academia ran with it, definitely. Okay, go ahead. Your All turn. right. So we got sins. Corner academia is corrupt in a lot of things. It's pretty insidious. Oh, that's very good work, insidious. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Colonizers. Colla Xers. <laughs> Colin Xers, sorry, Colin, Colin Xers. Xers. <laughs> yeah, Colin Xers. Shit, right, Polly. It's Colin Xers. All right. Excuse me. I don't use the <laughs> how X. Dare all the time. You. How dare you, sir? How dare me? <laughs> dare me. Dare me. I dare you guys to uh, send a super chat. How about that? How about that? How about that? Colonizers of language. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Latinx sounds like some type of bug spray. It, it really does. That's, that's one of the things. It does sound kind of like, you know, have problem with your colon? Latinx? Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. Sana, sana, Latinx de rana. Well, I, you know, when I first, first heard it, I was like, come on. It sounds like, it sounds, that's like Kleenex. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Latinx. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. So <laughs> is Latinx brought to you by, you know, by, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah. It's, uh, you yeah. Know, Johnson it's and like, Johnson sponsored by. Johnson. Yeah, exactly. 60 votes, guys. Let's get up to 70 votes and we'll kill the, uh, the poll. Let's also uh, thank uh, almost 50 people in YouTube. And then we have another, what, 80 something people hanging out in X. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's Beautiful. awesome. Right. JB, I'm the whitest Canadian you'll ever meet. I'm Canadian X. A. 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 <laughs> What's and up, Olaf JB? Says, Good to have you here, man. Yeah, true. I love uh, it. I, 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 I love different people from all over, and then we could connect on a movie or a, a, a game or action figures or comics. Stuff we love. I just love that stuff. I just wanted to say that. I know, I know JB's like that as well. Olaf in the Netherlands. I don't know anyone that calls it Latinx, mostly Latino, Latina. Thank God. Yeah. Next. I care about language. Uh, Daryl Brewer says to me, it seems like a reference to the Alphabet Mafia. Mm -hmm. Alphabet Mafia. I'm going to say anything that. Um, Hector Garcia, I think Latino is a way to conciliate all Spanish speaking brown people. It just. It's just absolutely wrong. Oh, wait. You think Latino is a way? Oh, he doesn't even like Latino. Oh, okay. Well, no. It's absolutely a, a, an umbrella word. And it's a it's a fairly new word since I would say since the, the uh, in the way that it's used now since the 70s. Uh, but you've always had Latinidad, Hispano. I mean, what, what have you had in Latin America? 
Um, yeah, you have, you know, usually it's mostly like, you know, the Latino is usually more like the certain countries, you know, mm -hmm. it's, and mm -hmm. then they spawn us where you are completely like related, sort of like, you know, somebody you had relatives in Spain or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the, a lot of people don't know in, in South America, a lot of South America, uh, Mexican also, there's still a caste system. It's not mm. talked about. But the caste system kind of lets people know where they are, sort mm -hmm. of thing. I mean, a lot of people say they abolished it, but it's still there in a sense where, like, okay, so so I'm mixed, and what yeah. I will call myself in Mexico is different than in South America. They have like a different slang term for the caste system, since you know my mom's black, but indigenous. That's already one. Uh, and if you're mixed just black and white, it's another one. So it's not even, it's, it's even more complex than, than just like, you know, Latino, Latina, but over yeah. in, um, in X Pacheco jr. Who created Latino Latinx who, what Latino gay create <laughs> my, what is it? S M H F L O L shaking my mofo head. I'm trying to see it. It's an X. Um, li listen, uh, Pacheco, I, I've been around. I don't know if you're older than me, younger than me. Um, I've heard that around uh, back in the 90s around uh, Latino activists where they were always trying to mess around with the language of the O. Uh, and then the the more of the hardcore feministas definitely wanted to get rid of the O. They wanted the X or they wanted, you know, that. So that was that was in the conversation. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I All think, right. I think, I think we're good. Olaf for $2 yes. super chat. Yes. And he's a member of the channel. Yes. Dare accepted. Gay Latino. Why not call it queer? <laughs> <laughs> you know that what might actually go well that olaf's a secret well, genius in this well yeah. listen listen what did i tell you earlier hoteria yeah. yeah dude that's a study hoteria studies that is legit i you that, know what when you actually said it it yeah. actually sounded like like it's some kind of loteria for one i'm like what yeah. did he say loteria and then you're right. kind of thinking it's like what well, what is that supposed to mean, you know? But I said, yeah, he did say the word, you know, the bad, you know, it's a bad word and in, in, in stuff, but it's, <laughs> Oh, no, uh, it's a bad word. Yeah, it's a bad I'm word. I'm just saying, yeah. I, I'm just saying that Quirtino, Joteria, in, 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 in the way that this gentleman described it uh, was that they were, they were owning the word again. They were owning who they are. And right. part of me gets that because... Joto was, you know, was used, can be used so nasty. Right. And, and look, we just had it, right? We just had uh, Mexican fans screaming what at a, at a soccer game? Well, that was the P word. <laughs> but but yeah. do you see what I'm saying? So, like, they actually, you know what? I'm a gay Latino, whatever. Da, da. I'm going to own it. I'm going to call it this. I was like, you right. go, boy. But just don't yeah, tell I mean, me. Yeah. You just don't tell me and the greater Music. community. Right. You know, but yeah. you own your shit. I mean, I, I I can't argue that. Right. And that's what I'm saying. If it's something that the community itself, it's a difference when a word is created in academia and used in yeah. the circles. And there's another completely different thing once the people actually, you know, accept it and actually take it as their own. That's when, you know, a word is actually, you know, took a hold of it. Oh, well, there's Pat Fernando. What's up, Fernie? I was born 92. Why leave why leave it Latino, Hispanic, or Chicano better than Latinx? Yeah. I, I, I like I like Fernie, man. I met him in person. He's a cool dude. He knows his comics. He knows his X-Men. He knows his he knows his DC. He, he he came to that um Blue Beetle event. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So okay. Well, all right. All right. All right. Comics talks with them. That'd be fun. Maybe we should. Yes. Okay. Here we go. We're going to finish this up and move on. Over 138 of you guys, fine folks here on the slant. We're just getting warmed up, believe it or not. And we will try to finish 
in the hour. Um, who uses Latinx? Sixty-five percent in the house. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, twelve percent influencers. Influencers. Eleven uh, percent social science students, and ten percent college professors. There yeah. you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You got yeah. The the chat is having fun with this, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you don't, like you said, if you don't talk about it, if you don't have a dialogue on it, you can't really say anything about it. It's hard to do so because you're coming at it from a different different perspective. But when you're dialoguing and you see, like you said, if, if the community in itself, let's say the you know queer community, LG, you know, stuff actually mm -hmm. uses it and, and adopts it and it grows into into the into the language drag drag started in the you know those communities um now it's a now it's 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 a colonial term everywhere in the world so mm. right so uh, you never know you never know um i want to say uh hello to uh some uh, bomb ass members of the channel long time homies and then we're gonna move on because speaking of gringos we got deleted scenes <laughs> That's a segue. You like that? It's a setup. Setup. It's a setup. We got another one. What? Clobby. What do you mean we, white man? What do you mean we? <laughs> oh, I love my gringos. You know what? I think we have the uh, the emojis. Uh, let, let, let's throw it up right now, guys. Members in the chat. We got white Tino. Let's throw it up right now in the chat. Either whether you're a gringo or a lover of gringos, throw that white Tino in the chat right now. That's that's awesome. Okay, let's uh let's play a little commercial and then we'll we'll be, you know, what, why don't you uh let me let me play that and then I'll I'll bring you in by yourself for a minute. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Fletch. Where is our? What am I looking for? I'm looking for. Our commercial. You see it? Isn't it at the top? I don't have the window open, but let's mm. see. Let me open the window. And yeah, I don't see it either. Did I take it out? Oh, I might have. You taken might have it taken out. it out. Mm, dummy, you it's dummy. Right. It's okay. It happens. I think it took it out. It happens. Well, well, um, we'll uh, we'll be right back. All right, thank you so much. 138 of you awesome folks checking us out in the Latino Slant. Uh, want everybody to know, please check out the latinoslant.com. We have a fresh articles there every day. It's coming out with a different one. And you can check out great reviews from Paul. You can also check out uh, stuff from Rosa. And they got a great bunch of great stuff that is going to be coming up um, as they travel. And also check out uh, Polly's book. And it'll be awesome. I know a lot of people are still in the chat with us. Please hit that like and subscribe. And we will uh, be coming into you with, like, you know, a lot of stuff that's coming up that's really cool. Um, we do have Polly giving us a, a tour of the, the Cine Con, which is a, basically a con for all uh, industry types that is related to movie theaters. So that's going to be fun. It's a great way for you to subscribe, send us a super chat or a super sticker and, or PayPal. And that would help out the channel a lot, especially with the traveling that Polly's going to be doing all for you. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's you. right. I'm going to be I'm going to be traveling. You know, um, I want to put up the. Uh... Can someone in the chat or somebody put up the PayPal link in our Twitter on the X? Uh, I put it on the, the X earlier, I believe, but I can do it again. I'll do it again in a second. 
Okay, no problem. Okay, so wonderful, great. I think uh, I think we're we're ready for the next one. Huh? Up to the next one. I've got a million ways to fit it. All right, we'll see you. All right. Thank you, Fletcher. Okay. Uh, so what is gringo fragility? Fragility, fragile. Gring X. I was having fun with that one. What is it? Woke watching, rotting our brains. Do we sometimes get a uh, so single-minded purpose that if a particular thing that may seem too progressive that we're watching, we take instant offense. Why is this gringo fragility, Paul? Why can't this just be like entertainment or, or you know, or woke watching? Why is it got to be gringo? Why, why you got to make it about race, Polly? Why got to be racial? <laughs> um, I will explain my reasoning in a minute. But what I wanted to do is let's bring up something that from Lorena Creo that she had posted. I thought this was really good. In regards to um, Gambit wearing a crop top is woke. How do you explain this? Crop top fashion has been around since the 90s. It's nothing new. Wake up. And... MCU film news is a, isn't totally wrong. The only thing is, is that they use Apollo Creed, and that's Apollo Creed from Rocky Three, and I believe that is nineteen early nineteen eighties, eighty three, eighty two. Uh, you know, so crop tops uh, on men have I'd say have been around since the seventies, as far as you know, people working out and being macho. But La Rena says this for real. Some of these people yelling woke all the time need to have a Coke and a smile and calm their tits. Um, she's not wrong. And this is, uh, this kind of just goes to my general perspective on how I intake anything right whether it's meeting somebody um reading a book you know going go and listening to, to political speech watching a film i'm gonna give that person the benefit i'm gonna i'm gonna be open if i go in there with blinders on then uh it's over the before it's begun again there's no discussion there's no compromise. There's no common ground. Common ground. You know? Um, so I thought this was interesting because you're seeing this pop up more and more. Kind of a a, uh, a, 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 a reaction that is often um, false not backed by any real facts, just by your feelings. And um, that maybe aren't even your feelings, really. Maybe it's something that you saw that someone else told you. That's how it is. I think that's what's happening because it's big business. Got to get those clicks, man. Got to hit it. Got to not talk about it. So that's always going to be there. Are you that person can, that, that can take that information, really take that information in, stick with what you like, and anything you don't agree with, let it go? Or do you just believe everything? No matter what, because it's that source, it's that channel, oh, they're right, 100%. Oh, my God. Let's go. One of us. One of us. One of us. What's it going to be? Can you discern anymore? Are you, or 
Are you brainwashed? Are you anti woke washed? Now, why is this a gringo thing? In defense of uh, of our gringo brothers and sisters, the construct is that white people are, have been attacked in media, film, books, the workplace. They're the ones that are getting a lot of shit nowadays. That's a fact. So it's your construct, how you're seeing things. Oh, man, that, that's not right. Kind of like the same construct as me. When I see an issue that hits me hard because the construct is being a person who is, is Mexican is always going to have to deal with issues that pertain to migration to uh, 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 and for being really racial to crime stereotypes that's a construct I can choose to play with it or create my own to defend myself or not now I call this gringo fragility because you guys are the ones that are being attacked most of the time I think it's fucked up and I'll defend that shit because you guys are my friends most of the time. And I would hope that y'all do the same for me. It's those times when we can't find that common ground that that doesn't happen and things get a little muddy. They don't feel right. But then you're called being woke. Or you're the one that doesn't understand. Or, worst case scenario, you end up screaming at each other. Now, I think Lorena brings up a good point in saying we all need to cool our jets and see something for what it is. So, I saw this incredible video from Andre of Midnight's Edge. And I want to bring it up. Here, the discussion is on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I, I think this is a we're we're jumping in at the seven minute mark of a 10 minute conversation. I think that what Andre put up there is 100 percent on point. The the we pick up the discussion in that why Mainstream media has gone, gone, gone after this movie, not liking this movie. Yet the audience does, but now there's a divide in the audience. So not only do you have a divide with mainstream media and the audience, you have the audience within arguing with each other on: Is this woke? Is this a queer ghost thing going on? So let's pick it up. Let's listen. And uh, we'll discuss. Distant second priority. Meanwhile, what queerness there may be in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire may still be too much for many in the audience, where some have been rendered hypersensitive to the message after being battered senseless with it for years on end. In everything from movies... Okay, so he says that right there. He admits that perhaps we're being oversensitive because we've been battered so much. Who is this we? Who is this we? Is it just people that like entertainment? I would say for a lot of cases, it's it's, it's gringos. There's nothing wrong with that. It's that that's who they're go going after. That's who they've gone after. That's who they made the villain. Let me know what you guys think. All right, let's continue this. To TV series, to kids anime, the that. message after being battered senseless with it for years on end. In everything from movies, to TV series, to kids animation, to store windows, to ladies changing rooms, and to beer commercials. Especially since this movie had the misfortune of bad timing, mm. in that it's being released on the wrong side of a certain South Park special, which highlighted the Kathleen Kennedy School of Filmmaking. You'd better. Put a chick in it and make it fucking gay as fuck. 
the filmmakers were earnest about it. But unfortunately for them, in the time frame between this mm. being filmed and released, having a lesbian subplot went from being a virtue signal to being a cliché confined to the realm of parody and in Frozen Empire. Mm. This subplot is so integral to the rise of the villain that there's just no way to assess or review the movie without it. Then, of course, there is the group. Okay, so interesting that uh, he's laying out the argument that there's one side that says, listen, it's the, this relationship is so gay that it's part of the story, and, you know, it... it, 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 it uh, it makes the villain that much more of a betrayal because they were falling in love with each other. Can't you see it? It's obvious. Andre saying is that whether that's the case or not, the timing release of this film could not have been worse because of the Kathleen Kennedy. And then before that, because of all the constant bombardment of attacking, for lack of better word, uh, better words, gringos. Gringos in entertainment and what he was saying. Okay. Whether that's the, the case or not, um, it's, it's interesting how he's laying out the argument. Now he's going to go after, now he's going to talk about the audience within. This is great stuff. Subplot is so integral to the rise of the villain that there's just no way to assess or review the movie without it. Then, of course, there is the group that don't see anything lesbian here at all. Mm. To them, and the actress herself has suggested this in interviews, Phoebe simply feels alone and vulnerable after being booted off the team and simply needs someone to connect with. Then it's no longer a division between just the critics and the audience, but within the audience as well, and not a lot of good can come from that. Mm. In short, this creative choice was one that is so critical to the screen story that it cannot be ignored. It went sufficiently far to turn away many in the audience, mm. yet not far enough to win favor with the media. That's what we call the worst of all worlds, rolled into mm. one right there. And that is a shame, because there's a lot of good here. The movie on... Okay, so... Even the, even the star, and in a big portion of the audience, were just like, has got nothing to do with being gay... This is just the character who is lost and lonely. I would be one of them. I'm totally one of them. I didn't see that at all. I saw this as a very wonderful re new relationship, new friendship uh, with these two teenagers who, and one is just trying to find a place. That's it. And then this, this other one, I mean, it was fantastic. You know, she's this, she's this ghost entity that literally wants to all she wants to do is be spoilers guys is be reunited with her family they all got burned down they all were burned to death i mean that's heavy that's kind of dark and then they just help each other out i i you know i, I again this would not be a, an issue this wouldn't be a talking point if it was a boy but it happens to be a woman a girl and it's and and, and it's it's a problem within i've seen videos i've seen I, and and no matter what, no, nope, that's how it is, Polly. That's how it is. And they're trying to indoctrinate our kids. She's 15. She's a kid. I, listen, again, I don't see it. But let's just say you're, let, you know what? Let's compromise. Let's find that common ground. Let's just say you're, you're, you're right. Let's say you're right. Let's say this is a lesbian young love of of a of a girl who is dead and I don't know her age and 15 year old McKenna Grace's character I would say one so the fuck what I don't care because I'm being entertained and it is a nice relationship and two the reality is thou th those people exist in the world and to say they don't, you're fooling yourself. You're absolutely, by 15? Come on. Come on. So, if that common ground is to where it's like, you, we, we both realize that, hey, uh, it might be, it might be with this example. And I say, so what? And you're saying, 
well, I'm I'm offended. Can we can we compromise to say don't watch the film? Or are you not going to recommend it because of its gay content? So we have to do we we have, this is a silly ex. It's a good exercise over a silly example, but I think I think it would, the the point is is that are we just going to be butting heads, or are we going to find something to where we can compromise about, have a little common ground? I I think this case is really just again, you know, the the just the just a woke watch horrible reaction. This to me is so harmless. And I will say, I will say that when Lord of the Rings came out, when Return of the King came out, with all those came out, they always referred to the hobbits as gay love because they were so sweet with each other and fond of each other. You guys remember that. And it was funny, but you know, it wasn't right. <laughs> and it wasn't, and they weren't. <laughs> so again. Why are we so fragile? And good job on Midnight's Edge. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Andre. Where's the fragility? We've been so bombarded over the years. And, and, and let's just say it's been over the last 10, 20 years. Is it true? If it's not true, then why, why are we so, why do we get so upset about it? If it's true, then we need to talk about it. Okay. We're going to keep this up. And I want to go right to some comments. It's just panning for a group that doesn't watch the product. I don't know, JB. I don't agree. How do we know that? Where's the numbers? I would think a lot of young people who, have, who might be gay are going to check out the film regardless because they like Ghostbuster stuff. I don't think it's pandering, though. If they were pandering, they would have said it. As you know, JB, a lot of these products, they just say it nowadays. Why the nuance here? I love nuance. I think nuance is great. That's just me. Rooftop. Even if it was girls can les out a little around that age. Big whoop. I I tend to agree with you, Rooftop. Imagine Hollywood that makes entertainment for minorities, not for gringos in their own country. Something is wrong with Hollywood. Who is their big target audience? Imagine Hollywood that makes entertainment for minorities, not for gringos in their own country. Uh, something's wrong. Well, Okay, all right. So that's a lot to unpack. To unpack, heels versus versus babyface said it best that they could have easily made the ghost a boy instead of a girl. I don't agree. That's that's no. It's a different dynamic, and McKenna Grace's character has always been that odd that odd person out. Okay, could it easy made what easy? Why? Can, what if it was two boys, and they're trying to help each other? Oh, that's a good, good, good little friendship of of, of two young guys. One's dead, one's alive. There was nothing sexual in this damn in that damn show in that damn movie. Hard disagree. Ghostbusters is not broke. Uh, uh, I think my uh, is like triple <laughs> X. It's not woke. It's just outdated fashion. Yep, woke is being overused now. Um. That's so true. I remember 90s male and muscle and playing basketball used to wear tight. Yeah, tank, absolutely. I believe that we are all at the tall tail end of woke culture. Gambit would not be wearing that. Well, you would know, right? You, you, you would know your characters. Is it in his character? Is it totally out of character? Then I could see why people have problems with that. Hell, I've seen pictures of my grandfather wearing a crop top. <laughs> Don't like the look, but Gamma looks hella metal to me. There you go. There you go. Hey, Polly. Hey, Emily. Yes. 
super sat, super chat, super stickers, all that stuff helps. All of it, guys. All of it. Okay. Fletcher's back. What's up? What, hola, do hola. Got? what do we got? Oh, we're still, we got uh, oh, are we still in the people. Yeah, we got like over 150 watching in between the two uh the two uh YouTubes and the Xs, Twit Six, whatever people Thank you so out. much. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Uh, if you are on X, uh, we dropped some links for you guys uh, for the latinoslant.com. Also, uh, checking out the Latino Slant on YouTube. And, uh, you know, Polly does have a book, and uh, we put a, uh, we put the link uh, for his book up there on X mm. for you. As well, if you would like to tip on PayPal, there's a link right there also on X for you folks. Thank you so much for all those watching on X. Watch it. Better watch it. Watch X. Watch X. Yeah. So what? What's your What's your thoughts on um? You know the fragility, the 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 intense reaction to stuff may that maybe is not what they think it is. Yeah, I mean, I guess it develops. It depends on which. There are some people who are, you know, do you have a lot of channels? Do you have a lot of people in, in the media? Uh, you know, influencing and all that kind of stuff that, you know, they just want to uh, put out the content. So, so they, so there's a lot of, I think, jump to conclusion, you know, of just, you know, oh, look, this could be conceived as X, let's, let's call it, you know, out. So we're the first one to call it out, even though, I mean, you even see that when, when there's just hints at, this person is going to be cast as this person or something like that. It's like, I want to be the first to jump on it. It's not on anything. And, and a lot of channels get caught up on that. And, you know, when the truth comes out, you're kind of like, oh, well, wow. you know, there's never an apology. It's, most, it's mostly onto the next content. But then uh -huh. you also have, I think, a lot of the audience that has just been burned. And anytime, you know, it's kind of like when you have a wound, and, you know, you poke at it or people saying, you know, like all folks always say, oh, my knee, my bum knee, it, the, the weather's changing, it's, it's, it's acting up on me, you know? So mm. I think it's kind of like that. It's like you you feel like, oh, man, I think the weather's going to change. You know, my knee's starting to, or my arm's starting to, to, to feel it. So I think it's some kind of like, um, like a mental, like, block that people have put on saying, if it's even a little bit, or if it's even hinted, or if it's just like you said, a nuance, uh -huh. then it must be because it, it can't be anything else. And they're just kind of like shunned back. And it's, it's, I think it's partly done because, you know, the audience now is cautious. It's kind of mm -hmm. like fool me twice, fool me three times, you know, type deal, where the audience is a little bit cautious on what they're watching because, you know, they had maybe that that conversation with their kids that they didn't meant to have yet. And now they had because mm -hmm. they want to see like, maybe like a, like a Disney trope or something that they, they weren't expecting. So now it's like, it's at the forefront. So now let's catch it before it even happens. And now like, like Andre, you had the video from Andre. Andre all the time says this. Sometimes I have to catch, he even says I have to catch myself because I might be seeing ghosts, you know, like, is it a ghost? Is it just something I'm perceiving? Did I actually see it? You know, a lot of times even you go, you know how sometimes you go, I have to watch it again to just see mm -hmm. what my actual thoughts on it. Because at first maybe I thought, oh, wait a minute. I, I actually, I think, I think I really love this movie. And then you watch it again and you're going, either two things. Yes, I totally love this movie. I got to watch it again. Or sure. you're like, wait a minute. Some people are saying something about it. I didn't see it, but let me watch it again so I can really understand what the other people are talking. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, I think going into our final uh, segment, I think it's important to 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 continue this discussion, this idea of discernment of of uh, of a, of a real complex issue. Not, not to say that that's not real, right? You know, we're being salted with our entertainment. I get it. You know, it's, but you know, like uh, the, we're going to bring up the border, uh, which we don't do a lot, 
but there's yeah. a lot of lot of lot of stuff going on. And I think I think now more than ever we've completely lost it, whether we're on the far left or the far right. Like completely lost it when it comes to this hot button issue. And so I wanted to, this is why I'm gonna I wanna bring it up. Uh before I do, thanks for your thoughts, Fletcher. Daryl, gotta head out. Have a good day, everyone. Great show, Polly. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you so much, man. Member of the channel. Another member of the channel. Hey, it's me in HD. Member for six months. Daryl was a member for 25 months. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. It's been a minute since I caught a live stream, but today reminds me why I come to the slant for, to the slant for. Thank you, Polly and Fletcher. Thank you. Thank you. Love it, man. Uh, Memberships, guys, here on the channel. Membership video every week just for you guys. Just so you guys know that. Just so you guys know that. All right. So I think uh, we're ready for our last segment that we uh, brought up. And uh, I will let you go and I'll bring you back in. Sounds good? All right. The term we didn't cross the borders, the borders crossed us, has been one that I've known since I was a teenager. Growing up where I grew up, I didn't grow up around a lot of Mexicans and people from my own culture on the daily. So when I learned about Cesar Chavez, United Farm Workers, being a zoot suitor, Mexican Revolution, I took it upon myself to tunnel back and learn about my culture, learn everything about my culture because I was so, so ashamed of my culture. I was so ashamed of my culture that I would deny that I was Mexican. Yeah. True story. That going into college, I made it my duty to find out really, well, where, what, what are my people all about? What did we contribute to this country? Are we just that what we say they are? Illegals, the help, the drug dealer, the criminal, the nanny, manual labor. Because growing up as a kid, I wanted nothing to do with that. I wanted to be in the cool crowd. I wanted to be in my theater crowd. I was a big theater nerd. That's all that mattered to me was being accepted. And in that group and where I grew up, everybody was white. It's just the way it is in my experience. So tunneling, tunneling back, you can imagine my shock as to just some of the history that went down over the past 150 years now, uh, coming closer to 170, 180 years of life in the Southwest. 1850s, you had the Mexican-American War, and all of a sudden, majority of Mexico was America. And even before that, it was indigenous land. We know that. That's how it works. Then reading up in regards to before a border patrol, there was the Texas Rangers that did this job of, of policing the border. And it really was a different type of border back then. In Texas, it was barely a, a line in the dirt, but it was more of uh, not understanding people who have lived there long before that 1850 line in the line in the line in the, uh, in the in the ground and who did not speak English. And this happened for decades. It's chronicled in the film The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez starring Edward James Almos where in the early 1900s, he was um, he was not only mistreated, you know, uh, and he was uh, wrongly imprisoned and accused, 
But there was a manhunt for him by the Texas Rangers. Fantastic story. That story is not alone. We jump to the 1900s, to the 1910s, 1920s, the Mexican Revolution. You saw a huge influx of immigrants that came because they were fleeing war, literally war on the border, war within civil war. The 20s and 30s, you had the Repatriation Act. That's where uh, the American government took it upon themselves because of times were tough uh, with the Great Depression. Let's let's round people up, regardless if they're American citizens or not, and we're going to send them deep back into Mexico. And that's exactly what happened to thousands and thousands of people. Move on up. World War II, we needed manual labor. We needed people to pick the farm, pick the fields, do all that crop work, but all the American men were off to war. So the government with Mexico created the Bracero program, right? And while that was well-meaning, it was more of just a cloak and dagger because most, uh, and this is, this is 1940s, most operators, most American companies didn't sign on, uh, on with it, even though it, was, it, it sounded nice, because they didn't want the government to control what they pay these people, these people being, uh, at the time, uh, part of the, of the Bracero program, but still undocumented. They didn't want the government to tell them what they can pay them. They, they wanted to pay them the lowest possible wage. And that, that still happened. It happened so much that in the 50s and 60s, the United Farm Workers was created by Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta to fight those very uh, conditions. Conditions that have been going on for decades of farmers, uh, whether they're legal or not, farm pickers, all that stuff and what they had to, uh, what they had to uh, endure. Now, their urban cousins had, and families didn't have it any better. It was a heavily segregated time. And that uh, advancement started happening in the 50s and 60s. In the 50s, there was a program by the uh, United States government called Operation Wetback. And it was basically the same as repatriation, but with that harsher name and uh, uh, harsher results. Because they, gen they then said, hey, you guys are here that were part of the Bracero program. You can't be here anymore. Times are good. Our boys are back. Boom, boom, boom. We want you out of here. This is nothing new to us. People who are brown, people who are raza, people who are Latino, people who are, who are majority, you know, Mexican, because Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. Cubans, Venezuelans, you know, we're, we're, we're not talking recent history. They have always claimed political asylum. The Mexicans got the brunt of this treatment. Where when times are bad, we need that work. Uh, and we can, we can, we can uh, tolerate, we can tolerate up to a certain point, uh, undocumented illegal workers here doing the work that is needed to make this country move and operate. But when times are bad, we flip the script and we want them out and they got to go. So this vitriol that has been happening the past couple of years is not getting better. Situation on the border is not getting better. And I give you that history because I think I, I want you to have context into where I'm coming from and to where a lot of Rasa is coming from. That it's not just that simple. Because the fact is, for 150 years, and even more so, we'll say, we'll say, you know what? We'll just we'll just play devil's advocate. We'll play it safe. Since the 1940s, America has always needed that labor force to operate, and to sustain itself. Whether they're legal or not, they have always been there doing those jobs, doing that work. We're not talking about when they're here and performing an illegal activity, they doing, doing something criminal, like a criminal act, like murdering people. Obviously, that's not what I'm talking about. 
I'm talking about people here that come that have a history. We have a history of coming here and have a history of working, families, et cetera, et cetera. So I was talking to a friend the other day about this. And it was a really interesting conversation because I've never seen in my lifetime with everything that I just told you. And that was very much, I very much was a cliff notes, guys. There's much more to that history. I'm, I was telling you cliff notes. I've never seen the things that I've seen now when it comes to how these immigrants are being treated in regards to them being shipped off to these cities and not being put in places of work in the work that I was telling you about, but being taken care of, literally fully funded. I've never seen that. Never. And I've seen a lot of shit when it comes to uh, undocumented people because some of them are my relatives back in the day. That's just how it is. So I don't know what the final end game is going to be with that. I don't, I'm, I'm, what I pray for is that it doesn't end in something that we can't come back from. But I was telling my friend who was so, so upset with how American citizens are being treated that they're not getting this funded first, that they're not getting the services first, that they're maybe even being uh, reprimanded for want, simply wanting their, uh, you know, their rights as American citizens. And I, I actually agree with them. Because again, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen why these immigrants are being shipped to certain cities in certain communities that historically have been disenfranchised uh, and uh, have uh, had to deal with manual labor as well. It, 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 it really leaves me speechless sometimes. And I'm, listen, I'm not an immigration expert. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an immigration. I, I'm just telling you what I read, what I see. And then from my limited uh, 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 education on the history of the Southwest. So I'm going to bring a couple things up. All I'm asking for, and I told him, my friend, in your, in your argument, please, please have some discernment for the majority of these people that come and that have always been wonderfully hardworking people who want, who, who eventually take all that stuff out, take all that stuff down, please, who eventually make the best American citizens. Because it's proven time and time again that these are the best types of people we want, the majority. That needs to be in this argument, this, this, this crazy vitriol where we're seeing uh, media just fan the flames and, and we're seeing, um, I got to be careful what I say around here on, on, on YouTube. Not because uh, I'm not trying to hold back my opinions. Just I don't. I don't. I want this this stream to survive. When you're seeing one group that is in charge, and you're seeing their behavior, and you're just they're saying one thing and doing the other, and you just don't understand why. And both so, both both groups are pointing at each other that they're the villains. When I see them as both of the same bird, the same animal. You know, um, I'm going to show you what you've probably already seen before. And today, as we're doing this, hashtag border crisis is trending and i know we've all seen this up by now and if you haven't then this is just days old let me take this off this is from the new york post and uh this is a few days ago 
I think this is Texas. If it's not, forgive me. New York Post. Migrants break barriers and rush border patrol in El Paso, El Paso, Texas. I mean, this is nuts. I have never seen anything like this. You know, there's always been that. You know, you you pay the coyote, you go, you 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 move by night, you you're doing your thing. You know, my friend even said, "Hey, you know," and he's not Latino. My friend, we were having this discussion. Listen, I, you know, because he grew up in L.A. It's like I, it's always kind of been like, "Don't ask, don't tell." We know that undocumented people have always been here doing doing the work, but is this something different? Is this insidious? Taking advantage. And making these people pawns? What is the end game with this? What is the end game with this? Because I do not like human beings being used as, as pawns. And I understand that everyone's got a job to do. And I, I, I'm really not, 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 not knocking the Border Patrol. The, I don't know what. I, that is not what I'm doing here, guys. But I've just never seen anything like this. And it 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 demands a better conversation than than their illegals lock them up, get them the fuck out of here. I don't accept that. I also don't accept that this is normal. Do you understand me? That this is not systematic on purpose. I'm going to use these poor people for my gain, for my advantage. Is it to get people who are from different parts, uh, you know, different cultures, different ethnicities to to get them to go at each other? What what what's the point? Because I I'm seeing that shit, and I don't like it. On the left, on the right, you're failing us. On the left and the right, you are failing us. Time and time again. So I go back to that. How can you, how, Polly, how can we find common ground? How, how can, come on, man, this, uh, dude. I, the only answers I have is what, what's in front of me. So in my neighborhood, my communities, I treat people how I want to be treated. I don't ask them. The first thing is that, you know, are you American citizen? It's not even the last question I ask. <laughs> You're treating me with respect, my lady with respect, our, our house is here with respect, we're good. But if you're, you know, a douchebag and you're being this, you're being that, You know, like uh, that's a problem. That's a problem. And then if it's obvious that just by communicating and chatting that, oh, okay. You know, you're a paisa from somewhere. You're a border brother. I get it, right? And even then there's some hostility between U.S. Latinos and um undocumented but i'm always trying to like you know to be open and hey you know what if you're doing good work here and you're 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 being a a positive con con contributor to to our society who am i i'm not going to go and do that work i i don't know any american white black i don't care what color you are any American, let me know, guys, if I'm wrong. Any American in my generation since 1970, right? And that's almost, it's over 55 years. Uh, and even before that, that for work, for work, they picked, they picked in the fields. Not summer job. But that's what you do. You feed us. Or... If you're in the or, or if you're or if, or, or if you're in the urban urban workforce, you clean for us, you take care of our kids, you raise our kids. I see this every day, 
every day. In fact, I may be a part of that because I work with my uh, with my cousin's uh, construction company. And all I see is other Rasa, other construction companies, other handymen. They're all brown. Cool. I don't know if they're undocumented or not. That's all we're doing is, a, is, is the best job that we're doing. Right. So I want to go back to that. You know, we saw the border crisis. Everyone's got good. I get the feelings, guys. I, and I'm, and I'm with you a lot. Uh, but I'm, I'm also with people that, that come here and work their asses off. And it's shit work. No, no American citizen is gonna do this work. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, not sorry. This is from uh, I follow United Farm Workers. Uh, uh, this is their their ex. You, they put these up almost daily. I, I think this is a. I think they do this on purpose. Because it's a constant reminder that there's there's a human behind every uh, crop of lettuce, every grape pick, all that stuff. This is Adrian. Okay. Adrian is working harvesting strawberries in Vista, California. He shares that picking season is beginning late as many strawberries were spoiled by heavy rains. This meant many farm workers were out of work longer than expected and are worried about meeting basic expenses. Hashtag we feed you. And I retweeted this and I said, damn right, they feed they they effing feed us. You know? These are these are my my almost like my favorite posts is that posting real people working. I don't know. Hashtag soy essential essential essential. Also tell like like what, what they're doing. Al Alcadio is working pruning pistachio trees in California. The gophers slow his work down and often cause damage to the irrigation systems. He works eight hours a day, five to six days a week. Hashtag we feed you. I, I, I just want a little civility in this conversation. when we're talking about illegal immigration, undocumented people here, um, whether they're, whether the laws are unjust or not, they are the law of the land. I get it. I think there needs to be some major reform. I think the talk on both sides have failed us all. And I just don't like people, human beings, being treated as a, as a political pawns, man. I de obviously listen. Obviously, I don't want people to be. I don't want people dying and getting murdered. Of course not. So I just wanted to show, shed some light on the majority of 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 the of manual labor is done by. Undocumented people. I don't know if that's the same as what we're seeing here. My gut is telling me, guys. My gut is telling me what that that first video that I showed you is something insidious, is something evil, is something different than what we are used to. We are used to the UFW that like those posts, like those like uh, you know people coming in. Well, I'm used to that. I honor those people. I honor anyone that comes and works their asses off here. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know what that other thing is. That kind of scares me. Kind of scares me, guys. So, um, yeah, I just want to give you guys a little, a little uh, just a little... Um, Shed a, shed a little light. I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. Here. That's not my job. You know, if we're compromise, if we're if we're finding common ground, we can all agree that this is a problem. And uh, you know, if we can even compromise a little more, 
most of these people that come here are good hearted hard working people okay let's uh let's see what you guys have to say hey it's me in hd 100 percent poly latinos do what most people will not trust me i've worked in all those industries for years <laughs> i mean have you guys ever tried to to do some of that work oh my god Oof. thanks hey it's me jb bad apples always spoil the bunch yeah yeah that's that's uh but seen the but okay there's always been bad apples right in that bunch like i said this is not new jb this has been happening in this part of the world since before the, the there has been migration of 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 brown people well before there was the the before it was mexico then mexico then the, then the states always been bad people this is different right to be honest yes it's insidious as people use as pawns this is sad to see they want to use illegal immigration to turn red states into blue during, or i got to watch what i say uh during can uh blank can never win why they are shipped to new york and other blue states let them deal with it um that's pretty heavy man it's pretty heavy daryl as far as i thought you took off brother as far as what i've seen i see illegal laborers uh, given first choice of a lot of organizations for lower rent income families which is frustrating for me when trying to work for it myself. Oh, interesting. Okay. So uh, illegal lab laborers given first choice of a lot of organizations meant for lower income families, which is frustrating for me when trying to work for it myself. Okay. I, I agree. If, if they come in, if, if they skip the line, right? Cause you know, cause technically you could say they're not even supposed to be here, but they're here. And if it, if it, if they can prove that they're working, I think there should be a system set up for them to to not skip the line, but for the process to pick up to where they become legal by law. Okay, but what you're saying is not not cool. Uh, it's not. And I'm with you. My, welcome to the European model of the last ten years. Germany has spent um, alone spent. 48.2 billion euros on them last year. Oh my god. Wow. Thank you, Melvinius. Okay, jump back. Okay, jump back on for a minute. My personal experience, my grandmother refused to acknowledge that she was Mexican because of the stigma associated with it when she was a child. Amen to that. Hector, Mexicans aren't even migrating, they are coming back actually. There is that there is that so you know and they're okay so let's say they come back they go to work and they migrate back they go to work and migrate back okay why are they doing it for money to get to give back to their to their people back home some people say well that's not right they're making money it's not staying in the states and then you could break it down there's taxes they they pay into the, the local economy while they're here etc cetera, etc cetera the argument goes back and forth i you know again again it, it's just part of it dude it's part of it's part of capitalism is that you're going to go to the lowest bidder so the work here is that work is going to go to lowest bidder i'm sorry to say that yep when someone refers to the border stuff mexicans get the mention not the central americans which is when majority where it's coming from you're pretty cool, Polly. Thanks, brother. No way, Polly. Thanks for your honesty. Boy, we're gonna call border busters, cabrón. <laughs> okay, I need to take a, I need to take a drink break. Let's get Fletcher in here. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? Uh, let me take a, a quick break. Let's hear what let's hear what you got to say. Uh, let's let people know what your thoughts. All right, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, part of the. Part of the stuff that's happening, I think everybody understands that it's not only happening in the United States, it's happening all over the world. I see it also in like South America, where you have a lot of, I mean, there was a big deal with, you know, Colombian borders and Honduras, 
uh, Venezuela has been going crazy. I mean, all kinds all over all over the world, even Australia, you know, we mentioned Germany, um, Spain right now is having an influx. Um, and it's happening in a lot of different countries, which is really, um, really interesting that it's happening all at the, almost at the same time in mass, mass exodus. Um, and a lot of people do uh, that are coming in, even the people on the clip that you saw recently are, you know, a lot of them are sub-Saharan Africa. There, there's people coming in from all kinds of countries, uh, you know, Baltic states. There's a lot of, it's not, it's not just one demographic now where before people could say, hey, it's the one demographic. It's no longer that's the case. Look at the stuff that's happening in Haiti and things like that. Um, it's It's been going crazy. I know JB's talking about Canada. Canada has been dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, the current government bringing in a lot of people from, uh, especially, I believe, uh, a lot of African Indian countries um, and stuff like that, and bypassing their citizens to to give them, you know, benefits and stuff. So it's, it is happening a lot all over the world. I know, like, even just uh, today, I think uh, uh, Mexico's president, uh, Obrador, just, uh, he wants, I think, like $20, $20 billion dollars to to stop migration or something like that. I don't see how he's going to do it, but that I mean a lot of countries are talking about it. It's not just a here's, here thing. It's going all over. Here's one thing I, I didn't mention as well, which I think is a very important. And I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. I really don't care. You know, from my friends on the left, the the fact is our 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 immigration policies, even before this this current iteration, and how we treat immigrants that we you know that get caught and all that stuff is the most humane of many many first world countries. I want to you know just go and check out the the border policies of Mexico, Salvador. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Look, he just laughed. Sorry. Did. Sorry. No, yeah, no, 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 no. You guys think it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> right. So, listen, I, I want to make it clear. I don't speak, uh, I'm not speaking as a Democrat or a Republican. I could care less about those fucking groups. Right? This is, this is me just speaking as a man, as a human being. Here's just what I see and the history that I know. And the people that, are, that that come and work and do do these jobs, I just feel that is that needs to be mentioned in this discussion. But what we're seeing, what like what Fletcher said, this is this is next level evil. This is just something I I've never seen before. Yeah, it is happening all over the world. It's not just here. Uh, I mean, China. I know that a lot of people in China is closed off. They are dealing with some immigration issues. Uh, uh, there's a lot of other countries that are dealing with it too. It is seems to be coordinated. It mm -hmm. does seem. I mean, we're not that kind Watch of. Watch your channel. language. Watch your language. Yeah. So, but it's it. It does seem like like Polly said. It does seems to be nefarious in its origin, and so much so that we don't know where the heck this is coming from. We know that a lot of people are are you know a lot of people coming over seem to be. You know, they have cell phones, they have TikTok accounts, they have, you know, the buses and certain routes. Even through Mexico, there was a huge deal with Mexican towns of uh, dealing uh -huh. with, you know, certain groups that, that were completely organized. I mean, they had matching T-shirts in Mexico and like in the news, they had all this stuff. And it was I want crazy. Ma I want a matching T-shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I want a matching T-shirt and a free cell phone with internet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, we're oh, not yeah, getting yeah. that. Ah, uh, man. You're funny, bro. You're funny. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. And, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it the system, I think everybody should agree on both sides. The, the system is broken. The level, the people, everybody that I know that works in immigration here in the United States, mm -hmm. um, on both sides of the aisle, uh, meaning like I know like some Border Patrol agents that are just, they're strained to the gills. But also mm. on the immigration side, uh, because we mm -hmm. had to deal with it, uh, you know, my family, 
we had to deal through the whole visas and stuff like that. And it's broken on that side completely. They're so overwhelmed. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. it's so overwhelming because the system is just completely too complex and way too overwrought. You know, they can't they can't handle anything this way. So, well, uh, not going to solve it right now, but it's good to good to good to air it out a little bit. Uh, what I do know is uh, there's some fun starting on the film threat right now. They just started, and. All right. um, we still got audience 28 people live in our chat in youtube can you guys make sure you smashed uh, oh 61 likes well you guys have done a good job there wow just just checked in on that thank you so much for that because that helps us out as well and to uh over uh, the 125 people that have uh, watched us on x thank you guys so much for uh for sticking around to <coughs> To, today was uh we hit we hit some 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 subjects <laughs> so yeah uh yeah get on over to film threat man uh, i'm gonna listen in as i get my dogs out we'll get some sunlight right now anything else oh uh olaf anything else um uh, uh fletcher yeah um if you guys could uh, uh subscribe to the latino slant um we are uh you know we just want you to head over there all you have to do is put in your email. Um, you'll get mm -hmm. news uh, that is coming up. Everything that Polly and the crew does is up there, and it's free. We don't sell your information. Um, all you have to do is give us your email, and then every month, every other week, we send you out a, uh, a just like a reminder, hey, check it out. All these articles are new, and more stuff is coming to the site. You're going to really, really want to be subscribed. Thank you guys so much. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. I uh, am. Let's uh, let's thank all our members. Hey, it's me. Hey, it's me and HD. Olaf, Lord Thoth, Sander, Fletcher. Okay, uh, those are the recent members that have still been hanging out. Uh, people who are friends of the channel, new and old. Let's thank them from the last, uh, I'd say, gosh, you guys have been great. Look at all these comments. Alex Zero G. JB Spooky Reviews. More MAGA. What's up, my dude? I wanted to say hello to him earlier. Uh, but it's good to have, see you see you chomping it up here. Penny. Uh, Dave T. Jit. Hector Garcia. What else? Vinny. What's up, Vinny? And uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, I could keep scrolling back, 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 but I don't want to. Yeah. That's just a lot. Oh, Melwinius. What's up, Melwinius? Thank, uh, good to see you here. Good to see you here. Um, I'm going to play closing credits. I'm going to stay on. I'm going to do a review of Frida so I can uh, clip it. So uh, if you want to hang out and uh, listen to my uh, me uh, doing a Frida review, that'd be great. What's up, dude? There he is. Okay, this is for you guys.
up, Hector Garcia. Glad to have you here, Valdez. Yubo. All right. Let's, uh, whoop, what did I do? Let's bring this in. Uh, I think you didn't end the stream. Okay. We're going to, no, no, we haven't ended the stream. It's still going, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're still going. Okay. From the latinoslant.com, Frida Does It Again by Alfredo Galindo. What am I talking about? Talking about Frida Kahlo, the beloved transgressive. Mexican painter from the 20th century has been an object of affection not only of art dealers and experts, but film artists and moviegoers worldwide. This is a great article. You can catch it on thelatinoslant.com. Link is in the video box description. Now, here is a 1983 movie poster. Uh, I believe there was, yeah, 1983. Uh, in the early 80s, independent filmmaker Paul Leduc lifted up the indie film Frida, Naturaleza Viva, which before became a cold hit, won eight Ariel Awards, the equivalent of the Academy Awards in Mexico, including ones for Best Picture, Director, Actress for o Ophelia Medina, and Best Set Decoration for Alejandro Luna, Diego Luna's father, among others. So there you go. There's a little Diego Luna connection. Um, I do not know of this film. I didn't didn't until I read this. I did not know that this film existed. So I may tunnel back and check out Frida Naturaleza Viva. So uh, Alfredo here is painting a picture that uh, we've been, uh, you know, uh, very proud and uh, very riveted and entranced by Frida's legend and her story. Okay, now we go up to Frida. Early on in the new millennium, it was Mexican actress Salma Hayek who developed a more risky biopic, which by the title of Frida and the direction of Julie Timor uh, was in the end a big winner also for most of her crew, giving Salma her first Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, winning two Oscars for Best Makeup and Best Music Score, and the opening wave for more promising opening away for more promising artists such as cinematographer Rodrigo Prieto and the aforementioned Diego Luna. Yeah, Diego Luna was in this movie. Did you get a chance to see this movie? Uh, uh, have you ever seen this one? No, uh, no, I didn't see it. I think I saw parts of it, you know, because like uh -huh. they showed it, um, uh, they showed it, I think, like in Mexican television uh, towards, uh, you know, Televisa kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like Bellas Artes stuff. Okay. Okay, so now we come up to the current documentary that is just released. It was a big hit at Sundance. Her truth, her art, her words. Now it's on Prime, a new documentary. Last January, Frida did it again in the format of an acclaimed documentary by editor Carla Gutierrez on her amazing feature film debut and produced, among others, by Hollywood moguls Brian Grazer and Ron Howard through their company, Imagine. Frida won the Jonathan Oppenheim Editing Award and was nominated for the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival 2024. Gutierrez's big triumph is not only on a technical level, which is a delight as it combines archival footage of the real Frida and her world with first-rate animation and AI but the heart of the story are Frida's words herself. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That's great. If they have that archive footage of her actually talking, that's important. Herself, the way she was in real life through her diaries. Ooh, raw, combative, and authentic. I like the raw. A relevant <laughs> feminist icon, not only to the world, but who defeated her own physical and cultural boundaries as a female in the 20th century Mexico. Truly an icon that has stood for ages. For a time when migrants, women, and LGBT rights are threatened, Frida is the explosive fuel to keep the lucha going. Viva Frida. Frida is now on Prime. Thoughts, Fletcher, before we wrap this up. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I was just laughing because you said, you know, you like it raw, so I think that's going to get clipped. But... Uh... 
No. I think uh, I think you know the more you have these documentaries of you know artists like this, you're always gonna have um, you know a better a better uh, time when you do have that personal connection to them, like you said, mm -hmm. in her own words, in her diary, that's so only pick your, it picks your interest, it, 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 it tickles your ear, as totally. they say, and, and just kind of gets you going because you're kind of going, okay, I've seen the movie, I've seen things mm -hmm. about her, but then this is her own words. Now you're kind of going, oh, like, even just listening to her talk, you're kind of, what is that gonna be like? How does she sound, you know? It, it seems very yeah. interesting. Well, you know, you know, Alfredo just Alfredo describing that really is what sold it for me that, you know, I want to see it. The heart of the story is Frida's words. Cuz you know, you seen Frida and you read about her, it's like, okay, you know. Everyone everyone has their take. Right. Let let's uh, you know, what do you got? What makes this different? What makes this documentary unique? What makes it make me want to see it? And what would make me want to recommend it? It's right there. Yeah. It's right there. It's Frida's actual words from her diary. So, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Well, again, yeah. I want to thank uh, Fletcher for joining us. But you can catch this as well as many other articles, Fletcher. Many other articles on our latinoslant.com. Look at that. Okay. Movie reviews. Music. Cultura and news. Fletcher, anything before we get out of here? No, no, yeah. And if you also check out, you can also check out the review uh, for Frida from uh, uh, from Rosa Parra the right there on the Latino Slant and more to come. So, you know, drop, the, drop your email in there and uh, subscribe. Thanks a lot, everybody. Viva Frida. Keep your slant for <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to end the live stream, guys. Thank you for, uh, you know, uh, uh, all you guys hanging out, uh, putting up with us. Uh, you guys have been wonderful. Aaron Taylor, uh, Olaf, Hector, hates me in HD, and all the people that are checking this out uh, on X as well. So uh, say goodbye, Fletch. Bye, Fletch.